before the Israeli team of seven military advisors led by Colonel Elazari left for Singapore in November 1965, Rabin, as Chief of General Staff, gave the following instructions. I want you to remember several things. One, we are not going to turn Singapore into an Israeli colony. Your task is to teach them the military profession, to put them on their legs so they can run their own army. Your success will be if at a certain stage, they'll be able to take the wheel and run the army by themselves. Second, you are not going there in order to command them, but to advise them. And third, you are not arms merchants. When you recommend items to procure, use the purest professional military judgment. I want total disregard of the decision as to whether to buy here or elsewhere. However, it took time for Israel to develop its own understanding of Singapore. As Defence Minister Haryung Chong's back carrier to Israel in 1980, I was then a captain. I, rem I remember him being quite upset about the explicit pressure put on him by Israeli defence sales to buy Israeli-made weapons. Minister Howe complained to the head of Mossad, Ishaq Hoffi, who fed this upwards. Some of these details I can't forget. After Ivory, the IAF commander was uh, General Amos Lapidot, then General Avinu Ben Nun. During General Ben Nun's first visit to Singapore, he admitted in jest to me that his image before coming was of Singapore as a very backwards country with people living in trees. He meant it as a joke, and he intended it as a backhanded compliment to us in Singapore. And it was in that spirit that I took his compliment. 